afternoon. This is Papa Builder of Things at My Shire Farm. Things are going to be a little bit different today on our question and answer. Uh, it would be dark by the time 7 o'clock rolled around, so we're doing this video pre. That should not stop you from asking questions. Um, and if we would always appreciate to, to like this, subscribe, uh, please. So we're starting in uh, front of the hoop house. Uh, this is going to be a tour of things that I've built around the homestead. We bought the homestead here uh, eight years ago, and uh, it's 30 acres. We paid $310,000 for it. It had the old house, the old garage, the old barn, and then we've built a lot of stuff on top of that. Not necessarily in the order that we've built things, but uh, we're just going to kind of make this quick. We only have half an hour to do it. So this is the hoop house. I think I paid $800 for it. It was a used hoop house from a local uh, garden center that was upgrading. And uh, we had to take it down, but we took it down. It was quite a bit longer than this. And uh, but this is all the longer that I wanted to make it for, I don't know what reason. And uh, we did use that this spring. And uh, if we were in full go, we would be using it right now for our uh, cold crops and it would work fine, but we're busy building a barn. So these are our Dutch buckets here um, that uh, is a or hydroponic thing. I'm sorry, no aquaponics to it, but hydroponic. Those are the storage tanks. Um, didn't have a whole lot of luck with this, but uh, we're anxious to get back to it again. The other noteworthy thing are these panels here for this raised bed are structural garage door panels. They were the outside panels originally on this greenhouse and um, I wanted to uh, reuse them somehow because they were just difficult to get rid of and that's what I came up with. The raised bed works great. I love uh, for onions and stuff which are really hard to weed. It really makes a great, great thing. Grew a lot of cucumbers in here this year. Uh, we use them, of course, to ship our stuff. We at one time had a double layer insulated thing. That's what the fan is for. We got our hose bib in here that, um, that we ran uh, so we could have water right in the greenhouse. This was one of our gardens. This is our little orchard here. We got cherries, pears, and apples. Um, can't see we did really great things with that, but um, but they're, it's coming along, it's coming along. Seven years, they, they're producing now. This here's our little uh, cattle corral thing. We got our, our gate, you know, for uh, doing whatever you gotta do to them, which is sometimes quite a bit. Um, we presently have seven, um, well, what do we got? We got four cows three heifers and a baby. So there's a total of eight. And uh, here we have our float, another hose bib. Lots of hose bibs. Um, <clears throat> here we have a uh, solar hot water heater that I made. I started off with just a little bitty sample thing, came back and it was near boil. I said, okay, that's great. And I made one and it was okay, but by the time the water would get hot and then it would go cold and it would hot, hot and cold. So but with the four of them going, it's continuously hot water that goes into our storage tanks and the greenhouse. Um, the water tower here is we're just kind of going. This is something I made. Uh, it's all out of pressure treated wood and the, the top was kind of a fun little project to make. Uh, this little train trussle thing was kind of fun to make. But I do want to mention that I put I dug post hole dig and put um, four by fours down in the ground and then leveled them off and then set this on top of that so that all this weight this buried it which is a lot of weight is not just on surface ground it's actually the three foot down so that was my solution to a foundation for this rascal pressure treated made up these straps and then got zinc oxide fluid because it has a little bit of galvanized on it and then ended up with pneumonia practically died had to go to the hospital middle of the night um, but everybody said well it's pressure treated it don't look like it hold water probably wouldn't but it has a vinyl liner in there a vinyl roofing liner so it's the same roofing that you would use 
uh, or same stuff you'd use on a roof, but this particular stuff you seal it with hot. So it could be a hot hot air gun, it could be a hot rod, it can be you know, an iron. And so I fabricated up a liner for this out of that, and that's what keeps the water in and clean. Of course, the gutter's feeding it. Um, and then we do have solar on, on, our, on the big house, and that is now tied to the grid. It was originally tied to a, a battery bank, uh, but then we got more, too much for the battery bank, and so now it's just tied into the grid. That's what's left of our garden there with our um, tomatoes. It, a lot went to waste. My wife got sick this year, and so we weren't able to do uh, everything we wanted to do with tomatoes. This greenhouse <clears throat> was something that I also made. Um, we can kind of poke our head in here in a second. I did want to show you this guy here. And this, the whole heating system for this got pretty complicated. That being part of it, this being part of it. This is my little um, turkey fryer heater that I made. We got a turkey fryer in here. This is just, a, you know, the thing you'd use when you got your hot oil turkey thing. And then I made a heat exchanger, if Zach can get in there, out of copper tubing that goes into the bottom, comes out at the top. And then if you'll notice, we got a three inch and then probably a six inch and then an eight inch um, going. These are just fittings that you can buy probably bought it one of the big boxes and to coil this copper tubing up I'll share a little secret there I when I when I bought the material uh, I sealed up both ends or maybe it came with a rubber filled it full of water put it in the freezer and then you're you're wrapping this thing up frozen so it doesn't kink and then when it unthaws then it goes away and but if you're trying to get that that tight it would kink, 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 it'd be a mess. But frozen water was the trick to wrapping that thing nice and tight. That's a pretty fun little thing I'm sharing there with you. Uh, okay, so in here, this is a mess. We have not used this at all this year because of the quail barn. And um, we, uh, I made this when we were building the house actually and used the back porch as a, as a place to build this. But these are laminated beams out uh, of pressure treated, and I use a Gorilla Glue, the one part urethane, and um, we'll, you'll see some other things that I've glued up like this. And um, so I contacted the a greenhouse company and said, hey, I'd like to have an automatic up and downer. And they said, yeah, 1700 bucks, and we can do that for you. But what I used was a, um, I think it's a Sears garage door opener and um and it has an automatic stop and that kind of cool and so that was given to me so that was free these ratchet things i think were 25 bucks a pop and so that uh, was another 100 bucks and yeah you know it just wasn't very much money the laminated beams there's a, probably a whole tube of glue in there which is like 25 dollars worth of glue and then a two by eight probably maybe a tube of 10 20 foot long and you slice it in half inch pieces and then glue it back together um, there is some video on that on how we made the aviary very similar so now we're back to the heat situation so these are the tank the holding tanks these are full of water and it's a, it's a solar greenhouse so that sun's coming in here and warming these babies up they feel like they're maybe about 100 degrees right now. Um, they're 97, so yeah, they're just about that. And But what they don't tell you in the books is if you've got your tomato plants growing here, and I grew a tomato plant for a year and a half in here, all these, and it was a jungle in here, absolute jungle. Well, the sun couldn't get to the barrels, and that was a problem. So. Um, the solar hot water heater was one of the solutions to that. That tuck turkey fryer hot water heater was another solution to that. And we're going to get off of that for a second. So this is my little light box. I've made it out of this stuff here and this double-sided foam. And they have this silver tape that you can make up. 
This is where we uh, do the, um, the, the babies. So we'd put our, it's a heat pad, put some water in here. And um, so you put your trays in here, your growing trays. With, and this is how you would control your temperature from this guy here. We've got an, a grow light over there. We've got house lights. We've got our grow lights here and yaka yaka, more grow lights up there. A lot going on, um, but it's, um, you know, we could do a video on this, and I'd like to. We've got some really cool rafts, hydroponic rafts going. We got a lot of Dutch buckets going that I made the entire thing. Actually, even made this growing tray uh, with our um, and thermoform this baby, made the mold and yaka yaka. It was a big project, but it was kind of cool. So that's kind of how that goes. We got one more thing about the heating the greenhouse and I should have showed you the fan in, in the greenhouse um, so I got a fan that blows into the shop from the greenhouse a nice skull in the yard cool and um, but I want to show you another component of heating the greenhouse so this is a wood stove that I made out of out of a 3 16 steel um, you can't bend 3 16 steel or I can't bend 3 16 steel in the shop but it was fabricated in my previous shop we, I built this at my previous home eight years ago nine years ago maybe uh, to move here so it has a boiler in it I intended to have radiant heat in the floor and then said geez what happens if I'm gone for a week it'll take a week to warm the floor up um, so I said I better put this heat later in so I've got a hot water heater that I've re-welded inside of here then the heat later there's a fan back there and the heat later works so good the super insulated wall super insulated everybody so it stays nice and warm in here it maintains 50 degrees whether the things on or not so that's nice so but the other thing about this stove is I have a, uh, a wall that goes up about this far out of fire bricks and the idea was that we have two flues we have this flue here and this flue way down here so I actually thought of this pre uh, my dogs helping me out here so if all the fumes are traveling over top of that wall then when I open the door all the smoke and fumes would come out so I have this guy here rigged up so I can turn this off or open it up and that way I can open that up, let the fumes go out when I open the door to feed the thing. So this has all got fire brick in here. It really works great. Uh, you can see, maybe you can see the wall back there. And the idea of that wall is if the fumes are just going up the flue, then they don't have a chance to combust. So it's got a lot of gas that just goes up the chimney. But if we turn that off and the fumes have to come back down here, it, they have to kind of be up here they catch back on fire and then they go back down and you can tell the difference of in the in the heat that's coming out of these pipes whether this is shut or opened it's a big deal um, any and all these things we'll do a more elaborate uh, video on if somebody has an you know an, any interest in it um, how I cut the steel how I bent it how we bent all this over it all makes kind of for a fun conversation. Um, again, it might be a good question for somebody. So, we're moving along. This, um, this old chicken coop uh, was how the farm looked originally when we bought it. It all looked red and old and like that. And there, someday we may move that. It's been pigeons and, and rabbits and homing pigeons and God knows what all in there but it's kind of fun little building that that cage on the back was for homing pigeons to come in and out uh, was hoping the girls would would get into that a little more but they did not thought that'd be a really cool business for them to do homing pigeons for you know they were white homing pigeons for weddings and funerals and whatnot but but uh, they thought that they didn't want to do that this um, 
aerator out here, the fountain in the uh, in the pond is fairly new, maybe a couple months old. And um, there's YouTubes on how to do that with a um, sub pump, but they used a lathe to make the sprayer thing. I've got a lathe, could have used a lathe, but I wanted to make it so anybody can make it that didn't have a lathe. And I figured out how to do that. It would make a really cool video, but I, I, I don't normally like making videos about, I don't normally like the videos of people that are just building something. They don't know if it's going to work. And they, you know, they're showing it like, you know, oh man, I'm building this thing. And they don't mention they don't know if it's going to work. And I'd like for them to come back and say, you know, a year from now, is if it's still working. But they don't do that, of course. So I always like to build something first, make sure it's going to work. And then if there's an interest, we'll do a video on it. But it's so far so good. And um, uh, the, the pond people that came to help us with the pond, they said the one, the bubbler that I had was really not helping because it was bringing up gunk from the bottom. And so they recommended that I change it to that kind of an aerator or something along those lines. So here's a clubhouse that we built for the kids some years ago. Um, as they get older, they keep remodeling and doing different things in there, but it's been kind of fun. Got a little um, sand thing at the bottom that we had to protect from animals getting in there and pooping in there. So, But this is our aviary. Um, we presently have some peacocks in there that I, I guess I do see some. And um, we've got, I don't know, nine or ten peacocks. Uh, these, all this bent wood, this bent wood, all that bent wood is uh, similar to what I did with the, um, the other greenhouse. This could make a great greenhouse, it could make a great garage, it would make a great anything. Uh, uh, there's a YouTube on it, a guy in Florida kind of perfected this, says it can hold up to 200 mile an hour wind, don't know, um, don't really care. It had, a, it had some trees over here that fell down on it, took out half of the thing, had to rebuild it. Not, it was more fun to build the first time. Um, but it, it pretty cool. I don't know if you can see some peacocks in there. Uh, not really, but they're back underneath that little shelter. Come out, peacocks. Come out and stretch your stuff. These are babies. We hatched them this year from eggs that a neighbor had given us and um, uh, hope to have peacocks next year. There is a door that's framed inside the, the, the new barn and that will go in here and maybe we'll put some males in here, scare them around so they can be ready for flight. How's our time doing? Good. Okay, good. So, um, so of course this is the new barn. We did order our solar panels, uh, hopefully this week or last week. Sunday being, uh, and maybe we'll get them as soon as next week. But the intention is is to go all the way across, two panels high, on the top of that Rasco, um, to help with that load. Um, certainly a good question on that. I'm not an expert. Got a buddy that is. He owns um, Star City Solar here in Miamisburg, and uh, if you're in the area, he'd love to talk to you more about that. So now we've entered into the Shire and um, as we talked about once before it's from the Lord of the Rings the Shire that the hobbits live in but this is my Shire and so that's what we call it my Shire farm and this is a um, uh, our root cellar it is made out of one of those tanks there uh, quite a bit longer I might add we can stick our head in there if you would like and um, I'm going to make another hobbit house for the pigs out of that one. It will go back here in the pig pen. That's our um, smokehouse there. But we can poke our heads in here. I don't know how much we can see. Um, we won't be using that this, this year. Um, and this is some of the Corian that we'll show you that I bought for $75. I bought two sheets. We've used up one. And um, this was $200. $25 delivered. Got about a six inch thick door here, some cool hardware that we've made here at the shop. 
And uh, yeah, so uh, we didn't have enough potatoes this year to warrant putting them in there. But it has worked great and we've actually planted potatoes that we've kept over because in time they do get, you know, pretty, pretty rooty. And um, so this is, um, this is a, a barn that we've had to rebuild, it burnt down. The other one was far cooler, uh, super far cooler, but I just couldn't rebuild it. Um, anyhow, got a little shire look going on. This is um, our, our um, butcher shop. And uh, we haven't used that. I guess we have used that. We butchered a bunch of bunch of uh, chickens this year, but uh, it was all put had a bunch of storage stuff for the new barn in here. And so we really haven't got to clean it out since we have moved all that building material over. But we've got our our lifts here. We've got two lifts here. This one here actually is solar powered. This one here is electrical powered. And um, you got our up and down business here. All of these uh, brackets and stuff here are made here at the shop. Uh, this is stainless steel and bent up here at the shop and welded in the shop. So my not such great welding, but I'm pretty proud of that though. Anyhow, so, um, so all these hooks and things were, are made here on our coal forge. And, you know, we. Thank goodness we have all these toys, that's for sure. When the place burnt down, the only thing that survived it was these hinges that I had made, this thing here, and another wood stove. This is our cooler. And it has uh, got insulated panels, uh, styrofoam, six inch styrofoam panels that I traded for some labor at a local pub. They upgraded their exterior walls and I did it for the ability to get all these walls. So the whole butcher shop is made out of these big insulated panels. This is a regular house air conditioner, but it has what you call that black box there is called a cool bot. And the cool bot tricks that into doing more. It won't go to freeze, but it'll go to 37 ish easy enough. And um, that's all you need to hang your meat in here. You see, we got our track here that rolls them in, and so we can. Um, I forget what that's called when you bring your cow in here for ten days or so, but um, but yeah. So we're most all of our protein we we do right here. So we got our poultry, our pork, and our cows are all butchered here. Last we could show you in there are. Uh, cider presses and things like that. This is another stove that I made. Um, all these crisp lines that you're seeing on both stoves are performed with a circular saw, a metal cutting circular saw. And with a straight edge, you can cut up to a half inch or three eighths, I'm going to say, without any concern. But quarter inch, three sixteenths, what this is made out of, you can cut it just like you're cutting wood, but it's cutting metal. So with a straight edge and a little forethought, you can make some you know, really nice lines and uh, it's just wonderful. So this is a cooktop stove underneath all this stuff that was stored in here. And then we have our canning stainless steel. Over there is our maple syrup stainless steel thing. This lid comes off, those go on. And uh, if we're doing, when we're doing our tomato sauces and stuff, we fill that right up with tomato sauce. We put them all in the jars, clean that out, put water in there, and we can hot bath, I don't know, 40 some quarts at a time. Really nice. And then, of course, you made a big mess, and you just spray it down the drain. And there's lightning. Hey, lightning. Hey, buddy. We got four, four dogs now on the farm. Three more and we just about have it right. So we got more peacocks in here. We'll see if one standing up there usually is. Nope. I don't know if we can see any in here or not. Probably not. I got the window closed now. All right. 
so but that'll be next year's big hoo-ha we'll have some beautiful peacocks running around so when we say we build a barn we really did build the barn we made these doors are made here at the shop that hardware is made here at the shop this door is made at the shop hardware even the garage door was made at the shop it's made with the same kind of paneling as this is. It's kind of a T111 design, and this is a tongue and groove design. So you can see the sections here. And it's fully insulated with styrofoam. And uh, this is the second garage door that I've made here on the farm. But mostly I just want everything to match. Uh, you can see that that one's been up a long time, and that's why it's so dirty. It hasn't got washed off yet. I bought some weather stripping this morning for the door. And so we'll be able to get the weather stripping on there. It got a groove in there. This is all pressure treated material and that I made the jams out of. The, this little guy here is for our sanitation thing. We can put our, our bug killer on the floor and we walk through it in and out. And that's kind of a big deal. Uh, this will be our shipping area. We've showed you this before. Um, We've put vinyl flooring on the wall. We use the same glue that you use for this FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic, uh, and then rolled it out nice and tight. And we will let you know we're done. Oh, we, oh we're done because we, we're going to do this afterwards. Um, so thank you for watching all this stuff. Hope I didn't mumble too much. And uh, we'll be showing you the inside. Oh, we didn't do the outside thing, but that's OK. And um, this is Papa, and we'll be talking to you right now. Right now.